Good afternoon, everyone. Quick audio and visual sound check. Let me know if you can see my screen and hear my beautiful dulcet tones. All right, sweet. You may have seen my giant potato head on or across our social media platforms. If you're a customer and you want to follow along with the latest updates, some helpful tips, advice, trading insights, and setups that we see in real time, please don't forget to subscribe. You can visit us on Twitter X, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and the other thing that I can't remember. <laughs> so wherever you prefer to get your social media, uh, bear in mind that we are there and posting into those things quite frequently and uh, can be pretty useful for you to uh, to get involved and get your um, your fill of us just go to any one of those type in back to the future trading and you will see a veritable plethora of available information we've gotten some pretty good feedback on that and so thank you uh for those of you who've been uh following along and giving us encouragement it's definitely not easy but we want to make sure that you're informed and have access to the best information we're here today to talk about a program uh, an indicator for an trader that has been available now for the better part of uh, this particular iteration at least i want to say eight to ten years we've been in business for close to 15 if not more and our claim to fame is that we are for the most part nearly entirely focused with a ruthless obsession on edges that provide a predictive insight into what markets are likely to do in the future let me say that again everything else that you'll ever see with rare exceptions there's a handful of us uh, it's a very small mountain that we stand on top of everyone else that tells you they're looking at some form of a leading indicator is lying to you they are using a lagging a perspective, an analysis, a technique that is either presently derived or derived from information in the past, something that has just happened or has happened over a recent period of time, like a moving average. We're the only ones, so far as I know, that are kind of posting these alerts into our social media programs for example we'll talk about one that we made for oil uh, earlier in the week back on monday um, and then to have the audacity to come here and actually give out the times and the directions to those of you interested in our program for weeks to test and see for yourself if the thing that you were expecting to happen was going to actually happen in the markets you trade. Now we've had a pretty bananas week. We've had unprecedented expectations, Federal Reserve meetings, FOMC, interest rate decisions. Uh, earlier this week, we've had pagers exploding in the pockets of hezbollah men and then walkie talkies blowing up in a near uh powder keg of conflict in the middle east it seems as though if we were going to try to prove to you that markets were predictive and there was a better way to trade them that we might want to lie low this week <laughs> This might be the week I call in sick. <coughs> but as you'll see here in a moment, the signals did not care about the distractions. And we're going to, at the end of the webinar here shortly, determine whether or not this program, this indicator, this approach 
has a pass or a fail with regards to its grade. And so we're sort of acknowledging coming into the webinar that I love this slide. It's a little old and tired. I got to find a new way to present it, but I think it accurately displays or portrays what we're trying to accomplish. You as an individual, all of us individually are saying sort of corporately, we're going to take our two or three or $4,000 computer, our gigabit internet with our fiber optic cable, with our amazing blistering terabit speeds, rather terabyte, um, and uh, combat and go against toe-to-toe, fist-to-fist, account-to-account with international financial juggernauts. JP Morgan, who pays a dollar in fines for every $3 that they steal, in my opinion, from the markets. Deutsche Bank, Bank of America, go down the list. Every single one of them have billions of dollars accessible to them, the best and the brightest algorithm developers and programmers, internet speeds that get their order to the exchange microseconds before yours every time. And now with the likes of programs and companies like Palantir uh, can predict what you're going to do before you do it most of the time, taking your stops and watching you weep as the market moves to your original target without you. And so we soon begin to discover that the rules we were told and taught when we first started looking at the markets are not the rules that we are seeing. The operating system we believe markets follow is not the operating system that the markets actually follow. We need an edge an edge that is timeless, one that works year after year, decade after decade, over the course of a century or more. In the instance you'll see here, Mark Douglas says, if you've got an edge, you've got everything. You don't have to be right or wrong. You can't use words like win or lose. Your job is to push the button. And you'll see some examples of that earlier here today. I love this quote from Regina Gwynn. It's an oldie but goodie where she basically says, when you look at institutional traders corporately, watch their behavior. When they come out and tell you the recession is not likely, we're coming in for a soft landing, everything is great, and then you have two weeks of sell-off. <laughs> and then they tell you they're concerned. There's some outstanding commercial real estate debt that they didn't think about or they're worried about the, the status of supply chains in the world. Right when they downgrade those stocks, watch who starts buying them up. They do the opposite of what they say. Their multimedia conglomerates support those opinions and spread the rumors across the communities. And ultimately, Regina says, the large brokerage firms do not and never have had your best interests in heart. Basically, people who are extremely well equip equipped, financially secure forever, geopolitically powerful, are uh, pointing their howitzers at your account every day. And so, as we start to sort of scroll down a little bit, what's the Achilles heel? What's the one molecule we all need to survive? What's the one trait that institutions, corporations, and retail traders all uh, require to survive? And we believe the answer to that, the oxygen of markets at a institutional or individual scale is time, time patterns. Time patterns are prevalent and speak directly against the idea that markets are random. Anyone who spent more time looking at random markets from that perspective than five or 10 minutes walks away with the understanding there's something really weird going on on the E-mini S&P. There's something really weird happening with Nvidia and Amazon and Tesla. There's something really weird disconnected between Berkshire Hathaway and 
and Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. There is a weirdness. If you watch it like a pet, if you watch it like a television show, you go, there's something really strange. This doesn't seem very random at all. And when I present to customers in this type of a setting, we're going to look at charts here in one second. It's, a, it's, it's always fascinating to me that inevitably the overwhelming majority of people who are going to watch this webinar, whatever format, Instagram clips or YouTube videos, the long form or the short format, there are an overwhelming majority of people, despite everything I'm about to show you, who will adhere to, cling to the handrail of the Titanic of their assumptions as it sinks into the North Sea. They will swear with their dying, gasping breaths that the markets are random and there's no way what I'm about to show you can work. And I hope today you'll keep a, a little bit of an open mind. There were three guys back in the day. Uh, more likely than not, one of you is following one of their methods of trading. And I put a little timeline here to show when they were born and when they were died that they were contemporaries. Elliot, uh, William Delbergan, and Richard Wyckoff, I, I, I see them in the same way that many scientists and engineers see uh, men like Bernoulli and Isaac Newton and Fermi and um, Galileo, the sort of founders of fundamental ideas. And they live alongside of the men who are responsible in large part for some of the largest changes in our society. Einstein, uh, whose work points to um, nuclear reactors and hydrogen bombs. Tesla, whose work points to all things electricity and wireless transmissions, generation of electricity, storage of it. Um, all these men are living in the same period of time. And they come up with some pretty wild stuff that fundamentally affects all of us 100, 125 years later. Elliot has this fascinating obsession with market structure, but he comes at it with the same tack that Wyckoff and Gann come at it with, he basically says the market and its movements can be projected into the future, but you have to study structure or what he calls rhythmical procedure. Uh, another way to say rhythmical procedure would be behavior patterns. Because man is subject to behavior patterns, calculations having to do with what he does and will do can be projected far into the future. Projected far into the future is a forecast. Because man does what he does over and over again, we can predict accurately what he'll do in the future. Secret of the Universe, 1946. Wyckoff comes along. Oh, by the way, if you're studying structure, if you watch trend lines, if you look at Gartley patterns, higher highs and higher lows, X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D, uh, all of those things, anything related to market structure ties back to Elliott. Wyckoff comes along, editor of the Ticker and Investment Digest, and he says, listen, I watch how volume moves in relation to price movement. If price is moving higher and higher and higher and the volume is getting lighter and lighter and lighter, it predicts reversals. If the market is dropping and falling and the selling volume is disappearing, the buying volume is coming in, it predicts the reversal. If it's increasing as it's rising, it predicts trend continuations. So Wyckoff says markets are predictable, but you have to look at volume. And then along comes this guy. <laughs> if we wore hats at my company, they would say, make America GAN again. <laughs> Our red hats would say, make America GAN again because Gann sort of pushes past 
these other bureaucrats at the United Nations of Trading. And he says, listen to me, time is the most important factor of all. He distinguishes time in the pile of available techniques to analyze markets. And he says, listen to me, there's one. I am the Highlander of market analyses. There can only be one. And what we're doing here today is sort of standing on the shoulders of those giants. We, we've got some new takes on it, some new approaches. We have computers and coders and ways to assemble databases and look at the patterns differently. But essentially, we're sort of following in the vein of the mine of time that GAN left behind for us. The discoveries we've made here today and the experiences our customers have had with them are due in large part to the insights of the people who sort of came before us. Any questions at this point before we go a little deeper? Okay, GAN gives us the Kentucky Fried Chicken secret formula. He tells us what's in Coke and Pepsi. He says, time again is the most important factor. We know that. Thank you, William. You're like a broken record. But then he gives us the key to the algorithm, essentially, that we're going to utilize today to prove that this is real and working 120 plus years later. If you study the past records of the markets you trade, you will be able to prove for yourself that history does repeat. By knowing the past, you can tell the future. So in essence, he says, listen, if you are here, if this is now, if you look back here for patterns, you will be able to see those things happening again. I want you to think of it like a cassette. Remember cassettes in the Sony Walkmans? How many of you remember Walkmans? I see a lot of them now in the nostalgia shows. They actually are pretty hot on eBay now. How many of you had a Sony Walkman when you were younger? Right? You'd had a cassette tape in it. If you started listening to uh, Corey Hart, I wear my sunglasses at night, and you hit the stop button, what Gan is essentially saying. When, when you hit that stop button and you stop that song in the middle, right here, and you come back and press the play button, that song continues. Whatever the rhythm of that song was, I wear my sunglasses at night. The next verse, the next line, the next word of that song when you press play again is going to continue at the same beat and the same rhythm, right? If it's, and I'm proud to be an American, stop, play, where at least I know I'm free. Same beat, same singer, same song. That's the key to what we're doing today. And apologies for the operatic solos I have foisted upon you here today. All right, enough with the presentations. What's going on with this stuff? Well, we give people who are curious about us an opportunity to test the theory for themselves. So for example, the hardest market arguably to trade of the available ones, and there's a plethora of them, e mini s p crude futures gold the dax the euro currency the mini dow the mini nasdaq euro us dollar pound dollar and ethereum all of these were available for two days worth of signals and so if we click on the chart for today's one minute nasdaq you're going to see a few things this chart was added two days ago 
Can you guys see that? Two days ago, BTTFT Rachel, one of the greatest people ever in the world. I hope you get a chance to meet her as a customer. If you have, you know, and if you know, you know. Two days ago, this program basically said, hey, this is the song that will be playing when Tuesday hits the play button. When the market's Walkman starts to play on Tuesday, this is the signal that we'll be playing. Now, let me get the right chart. There's the NASDAQ. That was the YM a minute ago. And what the program has done is essentially assume control of everything Gan used to do in his head or use a piece of paper and a pencil to calculate. The program is saying, are there any behavior patterns? Is there anything repeating? Are there any movements on the one minute NASDAQ that we can take advantage of if they happen again, right? Imagine in the room you're in right now, every three minutes, exactly every three minutes, the door of your room opens just long enough and wide enough for someone to reach their hand into the room with a hundred dollar bill and they pull that hundred dollar bill back after three seconds and close the door for another three minutes they don't make a sound and your wife tells you your partner your spouse your neighbor says hey did you know behind you somebody's opening your door and holding a hundred dollar bill and pulling it back every three minutes? If you believed them, you would sit by the door for exactly three minutes and when their hand came through, grab the dollar, the hundred dollar bill, right? This program is saying from two days ago, at 9.30, 9.50, 10, 12, 10, 36, 10, 50, 11, 01, and so on, a door is opening and the hand is filled with buyers. These are times when we expect buying to occur in the NASDAQ one minute December contract. All of the blue signals, 9.42, 10, 0 something, 10, 29, 45, 56, 11, 12, these are all the times where the door is expected to open and the hand is full of sellers. These are times that lately, over and over again, most recently over the last several weeks, there's an established behavior pattern. You get that? The only reason those lines and times are there, the absolute only reason they exist, is because those behavior patterns exist. And that's it. So if we start to connect what was expected two days ago, if we believed in this mythical door where things appear out of nothing at prescribed times, and we say, hey, what actually happened at 9.42? What actually happened at 10.06? What actually happened at 9.50 and 11.01? Every single signal that we're looking at on my screen right now was carved into electronic stone how many days ago? Two, two days before the market opened, these times were there as touchstones, reminding us that something was going to possibly happen again. How many of you, when 9-11 comes around every year, you go to bed the night before and you wonder to yourself, is somebody gonna do something stupid tomorrow? Anybody? 
How many of you, when you wake up on 9-11, you kind of walk around a little more cautiously? You look outside, is that the real UPS driver? You look up at the airplanes and you hope everybody up there is on their way to Sheboygan, getting along, <laughs> right? Every 9-11, you say, man, if, if I was a terrorist organization, this would be a great day to try some stuff. That's what this chart is telling us. So now take a look with me, because we have the morning and we have the afternoon. It's really quite fascinating when you see what was predicted versus what actually happened. And it's important to note the signals versus the setup today. So for example, what do I mean by that? I mean, just from a cursory examination, if we look at the times that we were expecting buyers to come into that door, the hand to poke through the door, open up, let loose the buyers, and they drive prices higher. Everywhere you see a white dot is a time where that thing was expected to happen. And so all I'm doing is I'm drawing an arrow at those times where the thing we were expecting to happen actually happened. And sometimes it didn't, right? Sometimes it's very obvious that in fact, the exact opposite thing occurred. And then again at 131, then again at 210, and so on. And then if we look earlier in the morning, we'll see that there are instances like 1012, where that move is expected, where a move up is expected at 1050, and it fails at the 1036 level. These are just the buy times, right? We did have a failure to follow through at 930 directly at the open and down here at 952 at first. It was off by one bar, one more bar and you were good at the turning point. And then vice versa, if you look at 942, if you look at 1006 and we look at 1045 and 1050, and 1112, and 1136, and 1151, and 1210, we see that a majority of the time, the signals that we were waiting for something to happen, the signals that GAN told us, if we watched and waited and looked for them, if we studied the past and projected those patterns forward, if we listened to the Walkman for a little while, we would understand what song was playing on the tape. And when we pressed play again on Tuesday, we would have a feel for what the rhythm and the lyrics would be. We're sort of left with this haunting chart where most of the time, the thing we were expecting to happen actually happened, which is directly contrary to the experiences of most traders, most people attempting to qualify and pass and receive payouts for the plethora of funded accounts in this world right now, companies like Bolinox and Top Step Trader and Apex are failing. They are getting in the exact opposite direction that the market is moving. Okay? And it's not just limited to the US session, here's the Asian session the night before. Nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. And then here's the signal at 7.49 last night. I love looking at charts like this because all of the signals are available in the future. Look at what's happening between 1940 and 2028 Eastern time. Between 7.49 New York time and 8.28, the market out of nowhere loses its mind. And there are these little pockets and signals where a little bit of foresight and a little bit of risk 
brings us to wonderful opportunities. Here are the signals from yesterday. Remember yesterday, the FOMC signal up at 220, down at 238, up at 304, down at 334. All four of those windows are predicted two days before the market. And then if we look backwards at the pre-market, these are the signals for the E-mini NASDAQ that were released two days prior, two days prior to FOMC Wednesday. And we're left with haunting, haunting occurrences of signals where, wow, how did it catch that low? How did it catch that low? How did it catch this low? How did it catch that high and that high and this high at 923? How on earth did a triple bottom come in at 1201 on FOMC Wednesday, up until 1226, down until 1244, and up until one o'clock and down until 109? Surely there was no way to know ahead of time that those moves were coming. And yet, if we scroll back and we just look at what was expected, information that was provided to 18,000 people that are looking at the program, old contacts who haven't bought the software, we invited them to say, look, here are the times. Here are the directions. And immediately they go into denial mode. That couldn't have possibly happened. And yet it happened. Any questions about the before and after of it all? Because it's kind of bananas. It's kind of really bananas. I want to show you an example of something that I published earlier in the week. I had told many of you guys about a setup that we were promoting based on a signal pattern we had identified that was recurring. We had told everyone in our social media circle, every trading group that would listen, about a pattern we had uncovered based on time. And we had noted in 2008 that the market had dropped from August 8th until August 16th. And then it had risen till Labor Day weekend, the day after. When everyone came back from Labor Day weekend in 2008, the market dropped until the following week. When the next week after Labor Day weekend's week came up back, the market rose and put in a new high. With zeal and fervor and bullishness on par with nothing in history, a monstrous green candle. And so I went out and did what I'm supposed to do. I told about a half million people, according to the trading group stats on Facebook, about this pattern. And I said, look, August 1st, look, August 8th, up until the day after Labor Day, and then nothing but bad news on television for a week. People jumping off virtual rooftops. Oh, it's the end. And I told all of them, watch out, Friday's coming. It's the bottom. It's the absolute bottom. And on our warp chart, we had a predictive buy signal right here, Friday, September 5th, up until Tuesday, the 17th. And I said, we're going to break this high. We're still on this track, by the way. You saw it today. And every single comment, without exception, was negative, derogatory, impossible. There's no way. 
bearishness, buying uh, puts, um, selling the market, looking at the sells, selling at resistance, the trend is down and it went straight up. Earlier today, these were the signals for the E-mini S&P on a three minute chart. Now, I want you to just with me look real quick and ask yourself, if I had sold when it was time to sell and I had bought when it was time to buy, would I have been better off or worse than I normally am when I trade without these things? If I had sold when it was time to sell and buy when it was time to buy, would I have gotten into profit immediately or would I have had a hard time most of the time? Was there a statistical edge so far as the times were involved for this market? Look at it. If you're watching on a video at home, look at it. Whatever God, whatever Kwanzaa tree, whatever rock you've been praying to for an answer, the universe is reaching back out to you right now and saying, listen to the Mr. Potato Head shiny bald guy who gave you the times and directions two days before this market. We have electronic proof that an auditor can go through and show you the times and directions that these things occurred at. Here they are, E-mini S&P three minute chart. That was published two days ago. Our web server has electronic records proving not a single pixel has been altered. And if you compare all the times and directions on that chart to this chart, this is what you get. What's going on? What better answer is there? Which one of these three guys was right? Because it's starting to appear, it's starting to emerge that structure can be violated and manipulated. It's starting to appear that structure, stop runs, higher highs, breaks of a high, breaks of a low, and reversals back in the other direction are capable weapons that can be levied against retail traders. It's starting to look like volume is not the answer. It's starting to appear in the reports and then the lawsuits. Companies like JP Morgan are spoofing. You know what spoofing is? Fake volume. Orders that appeared on the books that were never there. How do you follow volume that was never there? You know what you can't fake? Time. You can't fake it. And so here we are two days later. Here we are two days later. Any questions? No. Okay. Guys are awful quiet today. I'm showing you the thing. <laughs> I want you to see the thing. So earlier today, I posted these. These were the trades that we took in the live training room. We use this on the micros. We use this on full size contracts. After the open, a short signal at 9.43, boom, down until 9.50. We try to catch a reversal at the long, it's stopped out. It crosses back above the moving average. We get a few ticks. We sell a little bit here. We get chopped around. And then at 10.16 this morning, we bought. When did we sell? Up here at 1027. We bought again at 1029, we get stopped out. We came down here, we bought, we sold, and we bought again. That's one example of a trade. There are other examples this morning that we took in videos that are recorded, and you can see. When it came time to buy at 1012 on the MNQ, we're long at 2053 until 1029 this morning when we're going to exit the trade. We enter with the trend at a time that we've known about. We went short at 942. 
Now, now, now is the time to sell with a very small stop just above the high of that second candle. When did we exit? Exit, exit, exit. We're using time to get in and out of these trades. We found longs and shorts earlier in the week based on these times. Sell now. When do we exit? Here. You know why I didn't exit here? Because we had over 10 points on the ES that happened exactly when we needed them to. Look. Look with your own eyes. This was recorded in a go-to webinar. We have the video. I tried buying at 1010 and it went against me. I lost three points. It stopped out before it rose back up to the tick, by the way. And then when I got to the signal here at 1110, short, stop above the candle, 10 points plus seven on the day, $350 in one move. If you come and you look at the signals on the five minute ES chart today, judge for yourself if the banks had a plan coming into this morning. Judge for yourself because all of the times and all of the directions were available before you woke up today. They were available before you woke up yesterday. They were indelibly printed into an electronic format and distributed to 18,000 people so no shenanigans can take place. So when you say I want a trial, you just took one. No other vendor in the world can do what we do because it's hard. Now here's the magic. Ready? Look to the right. There are the signals for tomorrow. There they are. They're waiting for you. It's like Santa Claus is in a car with a trunk full of toys every morning in your driveway saying, hey, Bill, can I take you to work today? And you're like, there's no such thing as Santa Claus. Every day he shows up. He's like, dude, <laughs> I got a PlayStation back here with the game you love that you've been waiting for. There's no such thing as Santa Claus. Here it is. Here are the times for tomorrow. And you know what they're probably going to do? What they did today and what they did yesterday. These are the movements from yesterday. FOMC, 50 points. The program said watch for a sale at 9.05 until 10.10. Watch for a rise from 10.10 until 11.10. Watch for a drop from 11.10 until 12.10. Watch from a push up at 12.10 until 1.35. And if you're still trading at that point, you're kind of crazy. If you came in after the report at 3.15, it goes up from 56.82 until 57.24. And then after that, you buy here, you buy here, you buy here, you buy here. You buy here. Honey, you coming to bed? No, I'm still out here buying. You buy here, you buy here, you buy here. With times that we gave 18,000 people two days ago. Here's a fun fact. Of all of the people who see this webinar, of all the people who see the proof of this, if we lump them in a pie chart, ready? Of all of the people who see this, only 25% of them ever become customers. All of these people don't want to know. All of these people refuse to challenge their assumptions. All of these people are married 
to a dysfunctional guru slash trading system slash corrupted education. All of these people would rather dance with the devil that they know than deal with the fact that these moves and motions are premeditated, that the news can be manipulated, that volume can be manipulated, that structure can be manipulated, but time stands eternal. This technique has been working since 1909. And as we go back further and further, look at the opportunities that you had, little bit of risk to test it and see, will this time work? And you knew about the times in advance, over and over and over again. These guys pull the strings like puppet masters, over and over and over again, people lose their accounts, over and over and over again, they get thrown out of their evaluation account, tossed out of their funded accounts because they couldn't control themselves. They overtraded. They moved their stops. They moved their targets. They did not believe in Santa Claus in their driveway. Who's standing there saying, I have everything you've ever asked me for. I have every list you've ever made. You've been a good boy and girl. Here, take it. It's here, it's real, it's available. <laughs> I don't want it. I'd rather do it my way. And so day after day, there's opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. This is just time. Imagine if you aligned it with the system that you're using. Imagine if you aligned it with your support and resistance levels. Imagine if you aligned it with your volume deltas. Imagine if you aligned it with your volume profile support and resistance areas. Imagine if you were looking at entering a trade and you check the time and you said, not yet, I got two minutes. Not yet, I got 42 minutes. Not yet, this is a trap. This is a trap. Every signal here on all of these charts was known about a week in advance. I have the signals right now for tomorrow. I have them for Monday. I have them for Tuesday. I have them for Wednesday. I have all the times ready as though there is a cosmic bus schedule that these men and women will be following and obeying. If you did follow me on social media, here's what I want you to go back and look at. There's a video now on TikTok, on YouTube, and I told people, on Friday, when everyone was looking out at gas prices falling, in the video, I want you to go back, find it. Here's your homework. I told everyone, including a guy who's supposedly an energy expert, in a presentation I did with him side by side, telling people that the market would continue to fall. He spent his 30 minutes telling everyone exactly why the energy market was never coming back. We were going down into the 50s and the 40s. And I quietly pointed to that signal, Tim. And I said, they've got a plan. We're going up from September 13th until October 3rd. And I got laughed at. I was received with patronizing giggles and chuckles from those people. Ha 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 ha. And at that point, oil has now, per that social media post, gone up nearly $4,000 per contract. And so I show people week after week, hey, come with me. Look, 2008, 2014, here we go. $8,000 move. Nah, I'm good. Hey, look, we traded the E-mini S&P today. Here's the times that we gave you in advance. Were you long at 1250? Were you long at 215? Were you long at 325? Nah. Oh, okay. And so we're the only company that can prove before the market opens the next day that what we're saying is true. I had a customer, he was working with me, he trades large contracts, big shares, 
he dollar cost averages every time the market falls and he said you know i would really like to be involved in some of these puts i'd really like to know if the market is about to fall and take a low risk put and make money to the downside and i gave him the answers i gave him the charts i showed him the examples i showed him live examples he was here in the webinar last week and he came back over the weekend and he said you know i watched your training videos in the website and you really have a substandard website and i feel like you could produce those videos better and uh, i don't think i want to work with you and i said mr customer what do you care if the videos aren't 4k if i could tell you when every market you trade was about to go down or up well you know i just you're not you know i just don't think you're successful <laughs> you see this giant wall of resistance where this person is now being challenged at a fundamental level and he's seen this happen over and over and over again he's like i get, i don't i just gotta i gotta go i gotta go i I, I dollar cost average, that's what I do. When the market goes down, I just throw more money at it. And I thought, it must be nice. It must be nice to buy your way out of every position that goes against you. It would have been nicer if he made money when the market was gonna fall and knew in advance when it was gonna happen. These are the times for the FOMC day on the mini Dow. All of these times were available two days beforehand. Judge for yourself if you could have made money using the signals. YM three minute chart. This works on Apple on a daily chart, QQQ, SPY, works on Tesla from a five minute chart to a one hour to a daily to a weekly chart. If you're a SPY five minute trader or a SPY swing trader, the times work the same the accuracy is the same across all time frames euro us dollar euro currency futures bitcoin all the same time is the most important time is the most important factor of all he wasn't irish he was actually east texan when you hear Gann's quotes in your head, it sounds like George Bush. Time is the most important factor in determining market movements, and we're gonna get our profits dead or alive. Thousand points alike. <laughs> we're coming around the horn, we're finishing up. I'm gonna show you how you can get the program, show you what other people are saying about it once they started using it. There are patterns in time that are there. Conclusively, we've proven, yes, thumbs up, green arrow, check mark, this works. But it works because we're able to sift and sort through, discern the complex time patterns and project them forward into the future. People understand that these patterns emerge from chaotic data. But once you know your patterns are there, you can pull them out. You can pull them out. When we started the company 15 years ago, we compared our predictive technology to what Palantir Finance was doing. Did you know who Palantir's biggest customers are for their predictive software? All the banking institutions and the CIA. Palantir in a recent interview said, we now know based on somebody's activities, we can predict whether or not that individual will become radicalized and form a terrorist opinion. They're predicting who will be a terrorist to the CIA, and they're telling Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan when the markets are about to go up or down. And we started comparing our signals to their signals and it started working. A hundred years later. Now, if you study the time cycles and the time periods, you will learn why tops and bottoms 
are found at certain times. I believed him. And 100 years, 120 years later, I would love to sit down to lunch with him somewhere. If you could eat lunch with anyone, dinner, dead or alive, who would it be? That's my guy. And I would love to look him in the eyes and show him this presentation and walk him through what we did and say, how did we do? Did we keep the faith? Did we allow people to see things they would never have seen? Could we convince people that the thing that we're saying is true. If we look here real quick, thank you if you've left a review for us. Trust Pilot is a place where we're not allowed to write reviews. They can track IP addresses and tell if I'm just sitting here in my underwear at two in the morning writing fake reviews back to the future trading is incredible they're better than peanut butter and jelly sincerely john doe you can't do it they'll block you out and when customer after customer comes with actual receipts for the program having sat in a webinar for the same amount of time you have they walk away and they can put any number they want. They can hit half a box, they can hit five boxes, four boxes, and you'll see time and time and time again, they're all writing the same thing. There's a couple one stars in there too, which proves we can't game the system because I don't want any of the one star reviews in there and yet they're there. And people like Donna say the same thing. This was the missing piece for me. And now I'm crushing it. Okay. So I would encourage you, go read the reviews for yourself. People have their own ways of writing. You can see grammatical errors. All of that stuff is there. Go to the product store on the website. You're gonna look at Tachyon Warp. You need Warp to do any of the things. You need Warp to do any of the things. Click on the blue button for Warp, scroll all the way down. We got a new website coming, by the way. It's gonna be a lot clearer and cleaner and more informative than it is now. When you click on the Buy Now button, I want you to know that I have a class. When I show you all of these, these settings and these entries and exits and all of the stuff, and all of the things, and all of the befores and afters. These are settings and signals that we're taking in our live training class. These are entries and exits that we're taking in our live training class. If you're not a member of that class, shame on you. We're killing it in there today. If you don't want that class, just go to the checkout without it, but we meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern, the first two hours of the market. We try to go in with a $200 daily goal. It costs $200 for the month. I'm trying to crush that every day for 20 days a month. If you don't want it, fine, don't get it. Purchase agreement says, we promise to keep the program working, running well. You promise not to call PayPal 13 years from now and say you want your money back. We warranty it from crashes, defects, bugs, and breaks. Don't try to use it in another uh, website. Show it in your Discord, make money off of it. We're gonna find out our customers are everywhere. You're also not allowed to be a jerk. Don't yell at other customers. Don't yell at the people that are helping you. Don't use all capital letters with exclamation points in your emails. It doesn't go well for the handful of people who violate those rules. There is a place where you can put a promo code. Listen, W-A-R-P-O-F-F, W-A-R-P-O-F-F, W-A-R-P-O-F-F. And when you click apply, it's taking $500 off of the price. That's it. Lifetime license, two computers. Laptop, desktop, 
access to our video training archive, unlimited resources there virtually. You have access also to our Skype group. We have a Skype group for our customers now, well over 300 people in there actively discussing the program and their setups and their entries and their exits. I'm gonna just show you that real quick so you can see what that looks like. It's called the BTTFT community. Let me pull this up here and you'll see they're answering each other's questions. They're sharing their P&L with each other. They're describing what they're doing every morning. How am I doing it? What are my settings? What are my approaches? If we scroll back, a lot of those guys are sharing their trade results with each other too as well and saying, look, I took these setups at these times today. Here's what I did in one day. I have $1,000, $140, and a thousand on top of that. So we have a live Skype group available for those of you who want to be part of a community of people who've been through the rigmarole, who've been through the meat grinder, and are happy to reach down with a hand to help you and share what they know with you. That guy, me, I believe in you. That guy is telling people in advance, every day, every week for 15 years, what to watch and wait for. Two days after the fact, when we come here together and see what actually took place, imagine if you knew the times, imagine if you risked 10 ticks to make 100, to make 200, to make 250. Imagine if you were in a class where the guy told you what was likely going to happen before it happened, and you're up 287 MNQ ticks. Could you pass an evaluation in a day or two, move on to the next one and the next one, get 10 of them, get 20 of them? Could you not hit the max drawdown every time you try to get a payout if you knew when the signals were coming in advance? I think you could. In fact, I believe you could. I know we have people who are doing it every day. I see their testimonials. I see the things that they're sharing with us. I know that you can do it. I believe in you. I've seen other people come before you. There'll be other people after you that are doing it. Yeah, sure, I was gonna find your chart and show it to people just so they could see your curve. We have one customer who's been using it recently. There it is. I think I can share that. Here's one customer who started using the program after watching a webinar just like this. I'm proud of this guy like you wouldn't believe. You have no idea how proud I am of this guy. Holy cow. To go from the curve in the other direction to this in the real world, you can do it. But you got to challenge your assumptions. You got to loosen your grip on what you thought you knew. You got to forgive the other vendors, forgive yourself for falling prey to their marketing scams. You got to let the past go and recognize it's time. It's time for a change. It's time to use time. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine upon your beautiful, handsome faces. May the valleys rise up to meet you. May the mountains lay low before you. I wish you peace, prosperity, fellowship, and joy on your journey. We are for you, we believe in you, we believe in you for all the things that you want for yourself, that you want to accomplish, all of the success. I believe you can do it and I want you to have it. Have a great night, everybody. Move forth, be the light in the world in an ever darkening arena, a coliseum of doom. Choose optimism, choose hope, choose joy, choose love hate and anger they're lazy lazy alternatives don't be lazy 
choose the harder thing together, whether it's a trading indicator or our lives in the real world, we can make this place easier to live in, easier to work with, and easier to maintain. Have a great night. We'll see you guys all on the other side of the week. Welcome new customers. Thank you for coming on board. Bye-bye.